How's it going, everybody? I'm Brandon with Electrical Specialist, and welcome to today's episode of Ask Your Local Electrician. Today, we're going to be digging back into the mailbag uh, to find out what are some of the other questions that most people are asking or want to, would like to know from electricians. Uh, and here's a good one. This is a regular one that we get. Um, so here's the question. Hey, we lost power last week. We reset the breaker and the panel. Yesterday, it happened again. We had to reset it again. And today, we're dealing with the same issue. Super frustrating, right? So do we need a new breaker? That's always the question is, do we need a new breaker? And obviously, it depends is the answer, as you all know by now. Uh, but to be honest, most of the time when this happens, it's hardly ever the breaker. Is it the breaker sometimes? Yes, maybe one to 5% of the time. The rest of the time, the breaker is doing its job. So we should actually be somewhat grateful that it's stopping a fire, it's stopping someone from getting hurt. Uh, it's doing its job. So let's try to be patient with it and find out why is it tripping. So there's only a few reasons a breaker trips. Breakers were invented in the 50s and 60s, depending on which one they are. The technology is rather old, but it is pretty good technology. Uh, so we have to ask first, you know, what is a breaker? What makes it trip? So I think you all are pretty used to a breaker. We use Square D, uh, but they're all about the same, no matter which brand you buy. You turn it on, turn it off. That's about as far as we go with it, right? Well, inside, uh, and there's tons of videos out there on YouTube that show the cut open where the working, it's really cool, at least it is for me. Uh, check it out. But there's springs in here, there's magnets, and there's a piece of bimetal. Uh, the bimetal conductor actually, it looks for temperature when it gets hot. Breakers trip because they get hot. We know we're trying to stop a fire. We need to understand that. That's what they're doing. They're trying to stop a fire. So what they're doing is as that wire heats up in your house, this is rated for a certain temperature. Each size of wire is rated for a certain amount of amps to flow through it, a certain voltage, uh, and they know how hot that gets at 15 or 20 amps. This wire is rated not to melt. Obviously, you've got this nice insulation over this copper conductor. They want to make sure we're not pulling too many amps on this because that means if it's going to go over what it's rated for, it will melt and fall apart. We've seen it. It literally turns to fluid copper. This is where fires happen. That's what we're trying to avoid. Hence, we shut off when we get too hot. So we need to maybe look into the next issue is why is it getting hot, right? What's making it get too hot? <clears throat> the first and most obvious one is an overloaded circuit. What's an overloaded circuit? I think we could all make a good guess. It's when we're asking for too much power on a breaker. Now, for those of you with older homes, maybe knob and tube, cloth wiring, what we know about those older wires is in homes built in the 50s and 60s, they didn't have a lot of appliances. They didn't have dishwashers for the most part. Most people didn't have microwaves, didn't have blenders, didn't have, you know, they might may have had a coffee pot, but they weren't plugging in a Ninja blender and an Instapot. These are all new things. And each one of these items, a toaster, whatnot, draws eight to 13 amps. Now these older homes, were wired with 15 amp wire. So you could only put a 15 amp breaker on them or you'll melt the wire. So the house is full of 15 amp circuits and you're putting an Instapot on it that draws 13 amps. It's maxed, it might even trip just from that one thing. You, obviously we know, like we just talked about, you can't just go put a bigger breaker in. You're burning your house down on purpose at that point. So, um, Really, you might need some new circuits ran at that point if you're overdoing, especially in the kitchen. That's what happens a lot, a microwave. Hey, every time we turn on the microwave and the toaster, it blows the circuit. Very normal. Um, when they used to wire those homes, they would run one, maybe two circuits for the kitchen. If we're building a new house today, the average is about seven circuits that go in the kitchen. We have to isolate everything because so much power is being drawn. So. Just know if you have an older home, you're probably dealing with this issue. You probably need some new circuits ran. Uh, we know we don't wanna overload the device. That's what's happening if you're overloading it. 
Another thing that happens a lot is space heaters. We're getting, you know, we're in November here in Kansas. We're hitting a little bit of cold. People are busting out those space heaters. Make no mistakes here. A space heater is a toaster, right? So if you got out four or five toasters and plugged them into your kitchen countertop, you probably would expect that to trip the breaker, right? Knowing that a toaster or a space heater draws eight to 13 amps by itself, you surely couldn't put two on one circuit. So even in the bedroom, you plug one in on one side, one in on the other, most bedrooms are on one circuit, you're probably gonna trip that breaker. Heck, if you, even if it's a 20 amp breaker and not a 15, 13 plus 13 is more than 20. So space heaters are a big one this time of year. So I think that covers overloaded circuits for the most part. Let's go ahead and move on to another reason breakers trip. We have what's called a ground fault. Now, for those of us with houses older than 1985, you're probably looking at houses with metal boxes in the wall. I think we've all seen, if you go to change your plugs out or a switch, there's a metal box in the wall. Today, we use plastic. I think we've learned, first of all, it's a lot cheaper but for the older homes it's metal so you can imagine you've got a regular plug here with the contacts on the side you put that in there and look how much space there is between those contacts and the side of that metal box they're almost touching when you put it in so just a little shifting you have a direct short or excuse me a ground fault that's grounding out and hopefully your home has grounds but that's what we don't want it's usually uh an energized wire coming in contact with something we don't want to be energized like a metal box. So that's another reason it may be tripping. Uh, the third reason it may be tripping is a direct short. So what is a direct short? That's obviously, um, I don't have another wire on me, but you've got your neutral wire, you've got your hot wire and they're touching. I think we all know we don't want that. That's a direct short. Where does that happen at? Um, in a switch box, you know, we jam all our wires in here. We put the wire nut on, we twist them all together. Over time, as your house shifts and moves, or maybe if someone wasn't that experienced in twisting the wires before they put the wire nut on, which I would, just as a rule of thumb, don't expect your wire nut to hold the wires together. You need to twist them together so they hold themselves and then put the wire nut on as an extra precaution. Don't expect to do the wire nut to twist it even though some wire nuts say they will, it's just not a not good idea. So a lot of times a wire will pop out of that wire nut, a neutral will hit a, a, you know, a power wire explosion, shut the breaker off. It's doing it for a good reason. We don't want that. Um, another thing that happens, and this kind of goes back to ground faults too. When somebody says, hey, Brandon, I this breaker trips every night, no matter what I do, I set it in the morning before I leave for work. I come back home, it's just fine. Seven o'clock that night, boom, it trips every time. What's going on? A lot of times you'll have outside. Uh, the boxes outside um, are getting wet, something like that, um, and that photo eye turns on. So that light actually doesn't have power. It's not asking for power until it gets dark. It requests power at dark because the photo eye sees dusk and then it tries to turn it on, boom. So more or less, you have a timer setting the breaker off. Uh, it could be a yard light out in your yard. The wire has uh, come loose underground, rodents have got to it, or maybe the pole's eaten on it, it's in contact with the earth. When it rains, when it's dewy in the morning, we find a lot of times in the morning when that dew kind of settles down, it trips it. You know, it could if you have a GFCI, it'll trip it, but if it's a good ground, it'll fault out and shut the breaker off. So when you find it timing itself out where it's tripping the breaker, we're probably looking at something outside. So that's a good idea to look for. So just to round this out, guys, when somebody, when you're thinking or you hear somebody say, bad breaker, need it replaced, it probably actually means they have some kind of short and it's stopping a fire. It's stopping something bad from happening. So we want to look at it differently. We probably don't need the breaker replaced in fact, when breakers need replaced, that spring in there pretty much loosens up and you can tell it's just kind of wobbling. Um, usually when a breaker goes out, it's very obvious. It won't even reset. If you're still resetting it, 
it's probably not a bad breaker, but be careful by resetting it and having it trip over and over, you're making a bad breaker, you're creating it. So if it trips more than twice, I would definitely have somebody come find out what's going on, get that fixed. Don't wanna be in an unsafe situation. So that's it for this one, guys. I appreciate it. If you have any more questions, uh, if you'd like to leave some comments, feel free to. If you have anything you'd like to see, uh, feel free to go to our, of course, you're here at our YouTube page or Facebook or our, our website at www.especialist.pro. You should be able to, to find everything you need there and have a good Thanksgiving.